From Hollywood, CBS Radio presents the CBS Radio Workshop, dedicated to man's imagination, the theater of the mind. Tonight, transcribed an original story ballad, The Legend of Annie Christmas by Edmund Brophy, with original music composed and conducted by Leith Stevens, and starring William Conrad as the narrator and Amanda Randolph as Annie. Night wind along the levee crying. Night wind sobbing against the shore. Ghost of any Christmas sighing, moaning blue for days no more. Where did Annie come from? Where? From the yonder seas out there? From the mountains of the moon? The far off land of the Cameroon? Dambala's child, it has been said. Others say a king's instead. Greatest of the Nubian great with bloodlines back beyond recorded date. Wise ones skilled in magic's way say she first saw light of day cast to earth by the devil's spell for breaking all the rules of hell. Others claim a mortal birth, a god and goddess straight on earth and let their offspring stay behind, a symbol of contempt for mere mankind. Think of other times, forgotten scenes, the year of 1800 in the city of New Orleans. Rovers from all nations, wild men of Kentucky. Lucky if you stayed alive, just lucky. Swamp rats, cutthroats, mountaineers, buccaneers with gold-ringed ears, bloody politics and scheming wardsmen, pistoliers and deadly swordsmen, rivermen of varied shades and races, buckskin hunters wearing leather faces, Outlaws from the bloody Natchez Trace. Gamblers in broadcloth with cuffs of lace. Bowie, Jackson, Jean Lafitte, weaned on tiger's milk and meat. Red-handed pirates from seven seas of blue. Napoleon's artillery captain, Dominic Yu. End of the Mississippi's mouth, Annie sailed from the ocean south. She came on Christmas, hence her name. But no one knows from whence she came. Twelve black giants manned her ship, broad of back and slim of hip. Each stood eight feet tall. Twas odd, and alike as twelve peas in a pod. They left her silent on the river bank, turned round about and slowly sank from view into the distant far away, out to the gulf, past Barataria Bay. And then Annie saw the people gathered round. Good people, I am the most renowned, prolific mother on the earth. I bore 12 sons in a single birth. She's bigger yet than a circus giant. But majestic, no less. A female Samson. Or Hercules. Outwork a plantation mule, I'll bet. A brawny griff took in her size and claimed her as his slave and prize. By gar, you'll do in place of a ship. You're mine by the right of my rawhide whip. You two-footed swine! The sin blood white men gave you and your kind would use to enslave. The free man of color moved slowly in while Annie's eyes grew dark as sin. By the brawn of my arm and this whip so dread, I'll tame your mouth or flog you dead. She <laughs> caught the whip as it cut the air with a movement fast as a hunted hare. <laughs> 
And then they charge like wounded buffalo, these human mammoths, head bent low. And the griff cried out in mortal pain as Annie broke his ribs in twain. They rolled in the mud in a lock of death. Or the rivers roll, you could hear the breath of the watching crowd and the awful gasp for the would-be slaver in Annie's clasp. She gouged an eye, chawed his ear. The crowd stood awed and all of fear. She raised him up, a hook of broken bones, and beat him to the music of his moans. And like a toy, she flung him high. The bully boy swung through the sky out of sight far into another county, worth no more now than a dead skunk's bounty. And the crowd tracked Annie around the city's streets, proclaiming on her wildcat fighting feats. This day we found a champion. A champion of God's forgotten children. Bless you, Annie Christmas. This day will be remembered a long time to come. She walks in glory with the saints. And then she vanished up the Natchez Trace, a sudden legend of her ancient race. They honored her name on St. John's Eve, for the voodoo folk were quick to believe in the giant goddess who wore the seven points of her kerchief turned to heaven. And the years brought Annie far wide fame. Poor folk of all races blessed her name. She mothered the weak and fought the evil strong. But when it came to love, her luck went wrong. Her first great love was Goldmouth Bill, a gambler from Natchez under the hill. Four aces. Yeah, uh, that's the end of me. I'm through. Hands the chair open. You got my last suit. How about you, Trevor? Where you hail from, gambling man? Natchez under the hill. Under the hill and under the deck. It was a smooth deal of cards. From the bottom, I mean. My boy knife says you're a liar. I got its mate, gambling man, and I'm a calling. Hey, Hello. Hey. Hey. He lost his head above the neck for six aces and a loaded deck. And he drowned her sorrow and her tears with a thousand dips of the cup that cheers. Her lamentations rocked each river tongue. Her wailing blew a hundred oak trees down. Her next great love was a wild sea rover, a pirate known the wide world over. Again, fate stepped on the neck of her hope. They were parted by a length of manila rope. They swung him from a yard arm as the first light split the sky. I love you, Annie Christmas, dear. These words he chose to die. And he drowned her tears and sorrow, cursed past and present and tomorrow, wallowed in a sea of fiery rum. That's all of love for me till kingdom come. I'll buy a pie for Gregory, so my heart shall never, never more its love impart. Love's not for me, what's two is three. This voodoo charm my heart sets fancy free. And he grew a mustache, wore a hat of felt, stuck a brace of pistols down her sailor's belt. And he cropped her hair, wore a pair of jeans, and tucked a running flatboats down to New Orleans. Oh, Mississippi River man, Blue waters light your eye. Oh, Mississippi River man, so tall against the sky. Your flatboat skims the water with a cargo riding high. You'll be dancing in the quarter for another night is nigh. Mississippi River man, your song rings down the shore, for you're floating down to Dixie, and 
and New Orleans town once more. Annie's reputation grew to fable standard. She trounced a local bully at Ever River Land, and she wore a turkey feather rising from her hat, a challenge to all comers or any river rat. You got a bully on these few blasted acres of mud you call a town? Get him out of his hole if he dare come out. I'll tear the hide off him and hang it up to tan in the morning sun. I'm a cross between a snapping turtle and a swamp gator. I was weaned on panther milk and I eat grizzly bears raw for breakfast. Claws burn all. Send your white-livered champion down the river landing. I'll grind his bones to dust. This is any Christmas. You hear me? Such was the river custom. Such was the river code. A turkey feather was the badge of anyone who rode as champion of a flatboat along the waterways of the mighty Mississippi in any Christmas days. Now Annie wore a necklace made of yellow beads that served to keep a record of all her fighting deeds. She slowly added to it for each eye and ear and nose till it was long enough to use for hang and wash day clothes. When her boat was lashed to the city dock, she strutted proud as a turkey cock. Unloading was the least of all her troubles. Two ton was light as water bubbles. She strode the gangway with iron arms, and people came from towns and farms to gaze with much amaze and stare, and then follow her on to Congo Square. Now, whenever she joined the Congo revels, she spit in the eye of invisible devils. For evil spirits of day or night, Annie was gifted with second sight. Annie danced to the sad, mad tunes, scattered a thousand picayunes to all the poor folk of the land. Her purse had coin for every hand. Hear the old bambula drum beat with a rum bum 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 as the beef bones thump on the scarred up skin. A thousand devils dance within your heart and soul and brain. And a swift, mad ecstasy of pain numbs and maddens and spreads a flame that burns and sears till you call the name and grasp the necklace cross to save your soul's immortal loss. Gotta say Bambula, Badoom, Badoom. Gotta say Bambula, Badoom, Badoom. Ah, oh, hear the old Bambula drum beat with a rum, bum, 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 bum. Dance calendar in Congo Square. Ankle bells and posied hair bring a magic powder. Beware, beware, get yourself a powerful spell. The devil's there, the devil's there. Beware, beware, the devil's there. In Congo Square, the devil's there. In Congo Square. When the bugles blew and the war drums beat, Annie marched off with Jean Lafitte, her rivermen and his buccaneers and rugged dead shot mountaineers. She fought the Battle of New Orleans in pirate boots and sailor's jeans. And when she cut loose with a sneeze, a hundred redcoats died in the breeze. She fought by batteries three and four beside two men of fighting lore, the wild Belouche and Dominic Yu, who'd left his blood at Waterloo. She pitched the cannonballs like stones and cracked a thousand heads and bones. And when all the cannonballs ran out, she threw the cannons and gave a shout. <laughs> A shout that shivered the enemy ranks and raised the tide on the riverbanks. A shout, a mad blood-curdling yell like a demon legion loose from hell. Charge! You scum of the seven seas! 
The line of redcoats broke and fled. They envied the peace of the quiet dead. And the ones who saved their skins by flight, they slept no more and their hair toned white. Men and cannon and horses flew into the void of heaven's blue. And she smashed the lines to smithereens and won the Battle of New Orleans. And then, Annie quit the riverboats, bought herself some cows and shoats, settled down in a quiet place near a bayou off the Natchez Trace. Ah, peace at last and a pleasant home. Her great feet itch no more to roam. She sat in the shade of her small estate, content and pleased with her happy fate. And people traveled from every town to see this goddess of renown who shared her fire and told strange tales to the choral chant of the wildlife whales. Yes, <laughs> that's the way it was. There was only 14 in crew on this little old boat. So I pickled my fist and brine and sailed into them. It wasn't a fair fight by my way of reckoning. And sometimes, on a star-bright night, her thoughts would soar in fancy's flight. And she wished, as only the lonely can, for a life with the love of a goodly man. This single bliss is a bitter kiss. I've had too many years of this. She tossed the gray, gray charm into the air, and it fell on a distant planet there. And then something danced in her light, gay heart. Her blood raced up with a sudden start. She rested well that fateful night, for she saw her love with her second sight. And along the trail in the morning dew... He rode like a knight that Annie knew in the fairy tale of a picture book. His bold blue eye had the eagle's look. She waited on her swamp grass mat, and he tied his mule, removed his hat, advanced, and took her in his arms. Her heart sang true to his gentle charms. I'm Brimstone Pete, a trapper man. Uh, I preach the gospel when I can. You ain't a Christmas, sure as life. Now, I'm a man of few words. Uh, will you be my wife? Her tongue was tied, but her ardent look made Brimstone reach for his holy book. Heavenly Father, in the dawn of thy newborn day, I stand reverently before thee. My name is Peter Peppercorn, better known throughout the bayous of Louisiana as Brimstone Pete. My chosen bride is Annie Christmas. Bless this union, good Lord. My witness is my mule, a humble, faithful beast, akin to the one who carried thy beloved son into the holy city. I pledge thee, Annie, in the presence of God's early light. My name, my love, my honor, my heart, and my life. Whom God hath joined together, let no man set asunder. Just say I do, Annie. I do. So be it. Thank thee, our Father in heaven. Bend down and kiss me, love. He married himself to Annie then, and a bird choir sang when he said, Amen. Now, Brimstone Pete was a sight to see. He was six feet wide, stood five foot three. He feared the Lord and prayed his prayers and exercised with mountain bears. Now, Annie's favorite Bible tale was Jonah swallowed by the whale. Brimstone read it until she knew word for word of it all the way through. That Jonah was a wise old bird. You know what I think. 
Now, what do you think, Peter? I think he tickled the inside of the fool whale's belly with his whiskers, and the whale just had to chuck him up. <laughs> Is that the truth? No, it ain't gospel, but I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> Her love and kisses, beans and rice, transported Pete to paradise. Hot red beans and Creole rice. Cook with love and lots of spice. Dixie chicken, fresh corn poached, start you licking fingers to the bone. Way down there in Congo Square, best in fair in New Orleans. Hush, puppy, hushes, all the barking dogs. Folks need their mushes just like starving hogs. Smell of heaven floating down along the street. And he's cooking gumbo for Louisiana treat. Sugar sack around your neck. Wreck yourself a tasty pack. You ain't gonna leave the speck when Annie cooks with special love and means. Way down there in Congo Square, best in fair in New Orleans. But, sad to say, it had to end. Pete had the Lord and his traps to tend. He kissed his Annie's tears away, rode down the trail at break of day. As she waited, alone the long month through, the poor Pete was lost, long overdue. Six weeks went by, and Annie's eyes clouded with a grim surmise. That alligator called old Nick, haunted and lived in the very thick of the dreadful swamp where Sweet Pete crossed on his trip to redeem and baptize the lost. Old Nick had teeth like cross-cut saws and was 40 feet from tail to jaws. In the smoke of the fire that very night, she summoned the powers of her second sight. And then into the swamp's dark, dismal deep, she went alone with a vow to keep. Three hunting weeks, and then the very sky shook like a hurricane on high. Out of the swamp and a race cross Bayou Water, Rani chased Nick a mile and a quarter. Nick smashed his head against the stony shore, and he swung him high and aft and forth, snapped his jaws with strong bare hands. His dying tremble shook the Bayou lands. And he gutted him open wide. But Brimstone Pete was not inside. She looked and searched from throat to tail, but old Nick was a devil, not Jonah's whale. His hunting boots and his watch and chain were all of Brimstone to remain. Yet a miracle greeted a further look. There, fully intact, was his holy book. The great oaks mourned for Annie's loss. There were tears on the beards of Spanish moss. And the silence was such you could have heard the fall of a leaf or the wing of a bird. Now the good folks said when old Nick died that Satan left the earth to hide, for no one ever sinned no more, and crops grew bigger than before. Now Annie's grief grew multiform, the great heart chilled which once was warm. The Lord is my shepherd. And the 23rd of the holy psalms gave peace to her widowhood. Her qualms were quieted. She shut her cypress door upon the world and all forevermore. I'll be this day with thee in paradise, sweet Pete. I'm bringing beans and rice. And then her great heart broke and a clap of thunder. She died a-smiling, this woman wonder, 
and woods and water and earth and sky lent music to a last goodbye. The night was dark as the earth's inside. That night, when Annie Christmas died, the stars, the moon, the high blue sky turned darker than an evil eye. Her twelve black sons in coal black boots appeared in frock tail coal black suits with a coffin black as the river sticks. Black hearse, black horses, 26. Black hearse, black horses, 12 black sons raced along the road where the bayou runs. In town, by the dark of the waterside, they took to sea on the morning tide. She went as she came, in mystery, deep and dark as the deepest sea. Her sins were washed, her soul set free to join sweet Pete in eternity. Wise and small folk never grieve for Annie. Look high on Christmas Eve. Twin stars shine far out there, quite close to God, adorning heaven's air. crying night wind sobbing against the shore ghost of any Christmas sighing moaning blue for days no more moaning blue for days no more moaning blue for days Tonight, transcribed from Hollywood, the CBS Radio Workshop has presented The Legend of Annie Christmas, starring William Conrad with Amanda Randolph as Annie. The Legend of Annie Christmas is an original story ballad by Edmund Brophy, with original music composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Directed by Sam Pierce, The Legend of Annie Christmas was adapted for radio by Mr. Pierce and Mr. Brophy. The CBS Radio Workshop is produced in Hollywood by William N. Robeson. Featured in tonight's cast were Roy Glenn, Tony Barrett, Lou Merrill, Jack Moyles, and Ken Christie. Songs by Bill Lee. Next week from New York, the CBS Radio Workshop will present When the Mountain Fell, adapted by Draper Lewis from the book by Charles Fernand Ramuz. Under the brilliant direction of Dimitri Metropolis, the New York Philharmonic Symphony returns to the air this Sunday on most of these same stations. The Handel Concerto for Orchestra No. 2 in B-flat, Beethoven's Symphony No. 5 in C minor, and Samuel Barber's Capricorn Concerto begin the new broadcast season of the New York Philharmonic Symphony on a note of excitement. Music